there, I am Bonnie McCaffrey, and thank you so much for coming back for another vidcast. Today, I am with my friend Karen K. Buckley, who is an amazing quilter, and she does the most beautiful quilts. And you do travel and teach quite a bit, right? Yes, I do. I travel a lot. You do. And this is one of your classes that you teach. What's the name of this class? This is called Garden Medley, and it's probably my most requested hand applique workshop. And it teaches a lot of really nice techniques because you get to learn perfect points, you get to do perfect curves, and you get to do perfect circles. This is a gorgeous quilt. And I love the, the navy blue background, which mm -hmm. is kind of neat. But um, what is this block here? I call this block Heard It Through the Grapevine. And it's also one of my most requested classes uh, because, again, it teaches. There's a lot of different techniques on this, uh, some needle turns, some of the Templar and sizing technique that I like to do. Yeah. Of course, perfect circles, naturally. Uh, dimensional butterfly. There's some dimensional yeah. flowers. So it's a really great one-day workshop because it covers a lot of information in, like, say, a six-hour time period. Yeah. So a really good class. And I love, love, love this one. I love this quilt, too. And this is called Around the Garden, and this is also another project that I do for classes. But, oh, I, ha oh, I did some things on here I'd never done before. I painted fabric. That was very new for me. Oh, wow. Because some of the um, leaf designs and the things that I was uh, trying to achieve, I couldn't find fabric that oh, looked like that. Perfect. So I thought, well, why can't I paint my own? Yeah. And so I tried it, and it worked great. I was really shocked that I could do it, and the insects. I read an article in uh, someone who was doing embroidery, and to do this dragonfly, they used cake decorating wire for the wings. And I thought, cake decorating wire? What's that? Actually, what is that? Well, I went, I didn't know either. <laughs> so I went to one of the, like a craft type store, like a Michael's kind of store, and I went into the cake decorating section and I asked, because I had never heard of it. Yeah. I'm still not quite sure what they do with it, to be honest with you, but they actually had it. And so uh, the technique was to take your lightweight fabric and then form the wire in the shape of your wings and you kind of lay it down and then sew around it and it actually worked beautifully oh and gosh. so it was just I w the intriguing part for me was the cake decorating wire I thought yeah. what is that so it was kind of fun to try something new something different this is all machine applique so the interesting thing is a lot of the techniques that I teach in my classes are doable whether for hand or machine applique people which I think is another reason I like it so much yeah now another day in paradise tell mm -hmm. me about that quilt Another Day in Paradise was my second medallion quilt, and I absolutely fell in love with that quilt as well. It is yeah, still one of my favorite quilts. Gorgeous. Now, Bright Hope, mm -hmm. Bright Hope with a black background, but mm -hmm. it does have a lot of bright and sparkle in it. The quilt actually started um, um, damask, white on white tablecloth. Wow. But white on white for me, that'd be a little boring. Yeah. And so I thought, I mean, we need some color. And so I took the black background and decided I wanted the brightest colors I could possibly put on there. Did yeah. For that. Now there's lots of borders on that quilt, which is really neat mm -hmm. because you have a book. What's the title of the book? It's called Earthly Delights, The Perfect Finish. So that book explores all the different ways of doing your borders. Yes, and helps you whether you're doing pieced or applique right. borders. Right. Yes, absolutely. It's a great study mm -hmm. in borders. Mm -hmm. Now, Arabesque, mm -hmm. this is one of your newest quilts that you've done. Yes, in Arabesque, I spent three years hand appliquing. Which honestly, I don't normally spend three years. I mean, it's usually not that involved, but I just had, I really wanted to make that quilt. Yeah. And so, um, you know, when I was working on that, uh, after all that time, and then I wanted to do something that I could also do a nice job with, obviously, but do it a little faster. Yeah. And so that was fun to be able to come in and then and do something on the machine. One of my favorite questions, though, is people ask me, how long did it take you to make that quilt? I love it. I, love I that like question. when people ask me that question. And so my answer to them is, I've been quilting for 26 years. So if you asked me, like last year when I finished Arabesque, how long it took, I would tell you it took me 25 years to make that quilt because my philosophy is if I hadn't made all the quilts that I made prior to that, and there's like uh, close to 300 finished quilts that I've made, oh gosh. if I hadn't made those, I wouldn't have had the experience to make Arabesque. Right. So it's that um, culmination of all that that I've learned. Because when I make a quilt, Bonnie, Sometimes what I learn from it is I'm never doing that again because it wasn't yeah. successful or it was difficult. or yeah. And then the next time I'll do something and it ends up, I think, oh, now that worked out really well. Now there's something I would do again right. on the next quilt. Right. But I think it's just an it's experience yeah. by doing, and that's how you learn. And I'm curious, do you have any idea how many circles are on that quilt? I did it one time, honestly, I forget. Sometimes I there block it out. There are a lot there's, of circles. I want to say over a 1,000. 
on that one. And they are perfect, perfect. <laughs> which is really cool because you have a product that's called Perfect Circles. Yes. And what I'll, I'm going to do is Karen will talk about how she does it, and I'm going to uh, show D a video from her DVD so you can see what the technique is. But tell me about these Perfect Circles. What are they? It's a heat resistant plastic, so you can use this with an iron. And the basic concept is that in this package there are 60 circles, 15 sizes, four of every size. So pretty much you can find one that fits your pattern or right. a doggone close. And you take the circle, lay it down on the back of your fabric, right. you're going to trace around it and then cut outside of that line with a little bit under a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. And then I do a running stitch in the middle of the seam allowance and you have to do this with a heavier thread, like a quilting thread. You don't right. want a wimpy thread for this because you got to have a nice strong thread because you, you eventually... you don't want it to break. Yeah, or heat resistant. Those oh, are the okay. two big right. things you want to stay away from. But uh, regular sewing weight, I usually use quilting threads because I used to hand quilt but I gave that up, and so I have a whole bunch of threads, so now I use it for this. But I do my running stitch around, and then when I get back to where I started, I lay the plastic circle on the back of the fabric, pull as hard as you can, and it wraps the thread right up around that perfect so cool. edge. So these circles are die cut, so they're pr they're perfect they're on perfect. the edge. Well, the funny thing is when I was trying to develop this product, I was trying to come up with a name. And every single time that I enter a quilt competitively in the comment section from the judges, they always write perfect circles. And I always laughed and I said, if they knew how easy it was, they would not comment <laughs> because it is really easy. I mean, it's a very simple process. I love it when I teach in my classes because I teach the technique and I show the people how, you know, my students how to do it. And they always look like, that was so easy. I mean, I, I, they say to me now, this is amazing. I can actually do this. Yeah. Well, absolutely you can. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, once you draw the thread up and mm -hmm. you press it, mm -hmm. do you, you put starch on uh, it yeah, first. I, Actually, I prefer sizing over sizing. starch. It's okay. a little softer, mm -hmm. so it's easier for people to, especially for the hand applicators, for us to sew through it. But I paint it with sizing, and then I slide the iron in and dry it. And all of the techniques that I do pretty much require a medium heat setting. And it does say that in the directions that's with the a packaging. really good point because I actually have tried the perfect circles yeah. with my iron way full mm -hmm. blast and um, yeah, not good. It, it kind of warped it a little yes. bit, and I said, "Oh, okay, yeah. medium yeah. temperature." In the directions, yeah. it says medium heat. That's good, you know, so you don't warp them because that's really the only. Otherwise, um, they're reusable forever. You right. know, once you buy a package of them, you'll have them they forever. Are. And there's yep. mo you have more than one of the one each Correct. size, which is great. Because then I. Mm -hmm. able to do that. Mm -hmm. So you hold the iron on there for quite a while. I let it sit. The main thing is you have to allow the sizing to dry. That's the key to this. Right. So you let it sit. So when I'm at home, if I'm making circles, because I've never made a quilt that only had one, there's usually way more than one circle on any applique project. So while the iron is sitting on top of that first one drying, I have the next piece of fabric in my hand and I'm starting to do the running stitch. Right. And then that way, well, by the time I'm done with the running stitch on that one, the first one is dry under the iron right. and I can do like a little assembly line. Right. So one just goes in behind the other. And you don't knot the thread when you have done the running stitch correct. except in the beginning. That's correct. So that you can then peel that. Yep. So you can loosen your seam allowance, down. take it out. Yep. Yeah. And you, yep, perfect. Now the, perf the little perfect circles mm -hmm. were so successful you said, yes. oh, I need more sizes. Mm -hmm. And I agree she needed more <laughs> sizes because then you came up with Oh, it's a really Bigger. creative title, Bigger Perfect Circles. Big, hey, yes. it, it says it all. <laughs> and I, these are some of the ones that I've actually mm -hmm. used. And I made this quilt here with the larger Perfect Circles. And I had I so love that. much fun doing this. It's awesome. It was really neat. Mm -hmm. And I actually fell in love with doing the Perfect Circles and doing applique. Which brings me to this incredible DVD that you have, which yes. is Hand and Machine Applique, the Karen mm -hmm. K. Buckley way. And oh my gosh. Now I filmed this and we produced this DVD for Karen. After watching this, I wanted to applique. And I'm not a big <laughs> applique. Even my husband, who doesn't do any quilting uh -huh. at all, he said, you know, I might like to applique. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. DVD is great, and it's so thorough, mm -hmm. and you, you do do it both the hand and the machine. Yes. I decided I wanted to include both on the same DVD because the technique of the way I turn the edge is really the same, and so I thought I might as well just combine everything yeah. so hand and machine applicators can, you know, it's really yeah. for both. Because I use, that's how I do it. And it's almost two hours long, and there's mm -hmm. the perfect circles, there's um, perfect stamps. several different techniques for doing mm -hmm. the applique, yep. both hand and machine. Inner and, and outer perfect points. Stamps, right? Yep. Yeah, oh, it it's covers just, a lot. Every, if there's something you want to applique, mm -hmm. the information how to do it, it's in that DVD. It is. So if you have a chance to take a class with her, you will want to do it because she is an amazing teacher. 
it's absolutely wonderful. I love teaching. I like sharing the techniques and I like when people walk out of the class and they're so excited when they leave because they say, now I think I can actually do that. I had a lady yeah. last night when I taught at the sampler here. She came up to me after everybody left and she said, you know, I really wasn't interested in doing applique and just that little bit of watching for 10 minutes of yeah. the demonstration, she said, I actually think I can do this now. Yeah. And I said, absolutely you, you can. You make it possible. Right, it is, that's exactly right, make it easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for doing this with me. Thanks for inviting me. This is great. And thank you all for coming. I hope you'll come back next month to see what I have for you then. Thanks for being with me.